What's going on guys? I'm Banker back again with the Mistakes to Avoid series. And in this episode, uh, we're gonna be talking about something that if you're in this situation, you clearly have a lot more money than I do. And that is mistakes to avoid when buying a diesel truck. Now, before I get too far into this, do remember wheels, tires, suspension, customoffsets.com, whether it's a diesel, whether it's a gasser, we've got everything you will need for your truck. So first things first, if you're looking to buy a diesel truck, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Now our boy Dustin, he bought his cat eye because he was gonna be hauling vehicles to shows all over the country, making those appearances, putting that truck to work. Diesel is gonna be the best option for that. On the other hand, Lawson back here with his King Ranch literally bought a diesel for the internet clout. Maybe not exactly the best reason, especially if you don't know what you're getting into. Not to say that if you have the money, if you really are dead set on buying a diesel, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with the diesel. But again, these trucks are meant for heavy workload. They don't ride the greatest, they don't get the greatest fuel economy, but they sure do look cool. So I mean, there is that. So if you've got an extra 30 to 120 grand to spend and you're looking for either a used or a new diesel, the first thing you're probably looking at is the mileage. Now, generally speaking, guys are looking for 100,000 miles or less, right? And you, you buy a new truck, you want it under 100,000. But with a diesel, 100,000 is barely broken in, to be honest. And these trucks are running well past the 500,000 mile mark with some serious maintenance. So 100,000 is really nothing to shake a stick at. On the other end of the spectrum, 300,000 is probably some hard miles on a diesel truck. Well, it's still safe to drive and probably gonna last another couple hundred thousand miles, the 300,000 seems to be when they hit that maintenance mark where they're gonna need a lot of work. So keep that in mind, especially if you don't know anything about diesels and you can't fix it yourself, those shops are a premium. With the mileage thing covered, we're gonna lead right into maintenance. Maintenance, again, is expensive on these trucks. They are a very complex system and really completely dissimilar from any other internal combustion engine. They don't even have spark plugs. So a specialized shop is going to be needed for these trucks. Now this really relates if it's a brand new truck or a 20 year old truck with a couple hundred thousand miles on it. Either way, you're still gonna be spending a lot of time and a lot of money at the shop. I mean, an oil change on this thing is well over a hundred dollars. And then you start getting into older trucks that need a lot of work. Maybe it needs a turbo, maybe it needs seals, maybe it needs head gaskets, head studs, you know. There's a lot of things there, especially in the older diesel trucks, that really eat up a lot of money. So make sure you know what you're getting into. You're gonna hear me say that a lot because, well, some people don't. Now, there is one thing when it comes to diesel trucks that can save you a lot of money on maintenance or a decent amount of money on maintenance, uh, but it could make up for it in fines, especially in today's climate, and that is the deletions. Uh, if you don't know, basically any diesel made model year 2007 or newer is going to have some sort of DPF, diesel particulate emission system. Now this is one of the most complex systems of the vehicle and is technically required by law depending on where you live. I know in Canada you can get away with some things, but here in the old US of A they've really been cracking down on this. And Tuners have been getting fined left and right here for millions and millions of dollars for selling these kits. So maybe buying one that's already deleted, good idea. Parts are getting real scarce to find. And that's where buying the new diesels, well, you're gonna have, to, you're gonna have a hard time doing that. But if your hands are tied like many of us are, we do have a lot of EPA safe tuners and products available on the website. Uh, shout out to banks because they specialize in that kind of stuff. So now the next mistake you're gonna wanna avoid actually comes when you've got your diesel, now you're trying to modify it. And the first thing I wanna talk about is tires. So whether you're trying to haul with your truck or whether you're trying to make it look cool for the gram, the tires uh, clearly are an important part of the truck. Now you gotta consider load rating, you gotta consider you know size rights and make sure they fit and everything. But load rating and tread wear are gonna be the two biggest things you're gonna to want to think about. And if you're trying to go for that low, wide, show truck look, you're probably not gonna be pulling anything. And to be honest with you, you're not going to be able to. Uh, those tires are generally rated much lower than what the vehicle can handle. Now on the flip side, if you're gonna to be towing with this truck and 
that's your main source of what you're using the truck for, you're likely not gonna go with that low wide profile look. You're gonna go with something a little bit meatier because you know you need that load range. So, you know, if you're planning on towing, you're gonna look at those F range load tires, right? So you can get something heavy enough to haul whatever you're trying to haul. And if you're in the show truck, uh, not hauling, just bought a diesel for the flex on the gram side of things, then, you know, you've got a few more options. Just remember that you're not gonna be able to load the truck up like you would have before. And at the same token, if you've got a newer vehicle, and it's got the TPMS sensors, a lot of those low profile, low range tires aren't going to take the amount of air needed for the heavy duty truck. You know, this truck was designed from the factory to haul, to have small wheel, big tire, a lot of air pressure to be able to haul a load. So these trucks are wanting 60 to 80 PSI in the tires and your skinny boy tires are only allowing 40 PSI you're gonna have a light on. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is going to be lift kits. Obviously, there's a lot of options for these trucks, ranging from all the way from leveling kits to 12, 14 inches plus. It really depends, again, what you plan on doing with this truck. We go back to step one, make sure you're buying it for the right reasons. However, if you're towing with it, four inches is about the max height before you max out a stock gooseneck and you can't really pull anything other than a bumper pull, thus cutting down your load capacity. Now, if you're just going for a straight show look, Go out, get yourself 14 inch Cognito kit and just ball out. You know, go with Kelderman, do the air ride thing. You know, any level lift with the hydraulics. There's a lot of options in that realm from two inches to 16, even bigger. So make sure you know what you're gonna do with the truck and keep in mind that if you do wanna do both, four inches is kind of your max height. You're gonna have to, you know, look at Dustin truck. Perfect example of something that can tow and still look mildly good doing it and compare it to Lawson's truck. There to look good, doesn't really turn, doesn't really ride the best, but it looks good. So you need to decide what you're buying this truck for. And that's all I've got for you guys. So those are the big mistakes that I want you to avoid when buying a diesel truck. Let me know if there's anything I missed, anything you ran into, and as always, like, subscribe, and comment to our YouTube. I'm Banker, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.